Unidentified drones. In 2014, mysterious and elaborate drones were discovered flying over 13 of the 19 nuclear power plants in France. Between October 5th and November 2nd, French guards of the 13 nuclear plants spotted several drones flying above the facilities. This included the nuclear sites of Le Blaye in southwestern France and Gravelines in the north. The area above and around nuclear reactors is restricted airspace. Still, the drones were small and agile enough to avoid detection by the French Air Force's monitoring equipment, leading some to wonder if the perpetrator was familiar with military technology and footprints at the bases. No aircraft can fly within five kilometers of the facilities, and overflying them is punishable with more than a year in prison and fines of about 100,000 euros. French officials reported that the drones appeared to be civilian, available commercially to the public, and not military grade. The drones cost several thousand euros each, and appeared to be flown as part of a coordinated effort of a moneyed organization. A spokesperson from the French government said to news media, quote, Our main concern is that the drones will take photos and video footage of the plants. French authorities were unable to intercept the drones or determine who was behind this mysterious effort. The government spokesperson concluded by saying, quote, One of our security concerns is to avoid having any precise images being taken of the nuclear plant. While the French government insists the drones pose no threat, it has poured more than a million euros into counter drone technology. The French Secretariat General for National Defense and Security issued an official statement calling the mysterious drone appearances, quote, an organized provocation aimed at disrupting the surveillance chain and protection of these sites. Politicians and activists believe that the drones were funded by Greenpeace, an environmental organization opposed to nuclear power. The environmental group quickly responded by denying any possible involvement and took the opportunity to remind the French people of the nuclear site's vulnerability if they fall under the control of terrorists. Greenpeace nuclear campaigner Yannick Rousselet said to Europe One Radio, quote, Today, none of our nuclear plants could resist a plane crash. A drone carrying explosives would present an extremely important security issue. He explained that French nuclear sites do not comply with security measures that should have been implemented after September 11th. To prove the organization's point, Greenpeace deliberately crashed a Superman-shaped drone on the Bouget nuclear plant near the city of Lyon in 2018. The environmental organization published the video on its official Twitter page, accompanied by the following, quote, This symbolic action again highlights the extreme vulnerability of this type of building, which contains the highest amount of radioactivity in nuclear plants. Others believe that if the drones do not belong to Greenpeace, the danger of them being used by an organization linked to terrorism may predict a darker future for national and global security, as Greenpeace demonstrated. Military experts believe that the camera-equipped drones would be useful for reconnaissance by an entity intending to harm and take over the facilities. French authorities have targeted Islamic political refugees as possible suspects. As recent terrorist attacks in Europe have escalated during the last five years, experts fear that the refugees are being motivated by Islamic terrorist organizations operating outside of Europe. For the time being, drone visits on the 19 nuclear sites are not uncommon, and it seems that the French authorities have a dilemma. Do they really pose a threat or not? Only time will tell. Fog Bank. In U.S. military history, its nuclear arsenal recipes have always remained the most secretive and less officially known weapons. Although most of the nuclear warheads are physically identified by the public, very few know their real capabilities, and more importantly, what they are made of. Such was the case of one Cold War-era missile component that gained public attention in 2007 when the U.S. Navy endeavored to refurbish and modernize its W-76 warheads, the nuclear payload atop Trident II missiles carried by submarines. The Navy discovered an essential but classified material of the W-76 warhead, and nobody knew what it was. It was codenamed Fogbank, and that was it. No person in active duty knew how it functioned or what it did. Technicians described it as a lookalike to either styrofoam or aerogel, but its functions remained unknown. 
When the Navy set out to investigate, it was discovered that Fog Bank was initially produced at a secure military facility known as the Y-12 Complex in Oak Ridge, Tennessee in the 1970s and 80s during the Cold War era arms race between the U.S. and the USSR. The little intel found specified that Fog Bank's materials and composition and the method of creation were entirely classified. Given this, the few documents available to the military on Fog Bank's production were almost useless. To make matters worse, the engineers that probably developed it were either retired or dead. It took the Pentagon two separate attempts and nearly a hundred million dollars to successfully recreate the highly confidential material. In 2002, then NNSA Director Thomas D'Agostino told members of the House of Representatives, quote, There's a material that we currently use, and it's in a facility that we built at Y-12. It's a very complicated material that we call the fog bank. It's a material that's very important to, you know, our W-76 life extension activity. It's called interstage material, but the chemical details, of course, are classified. While the military will not confirm the allegations, experts believe that, according to what D'Agostino said related to fog bank, it sits between the primary and secondary stages of a two-stage thermonuclear weapon and transfers energy between the fission and fusion portions. Experts also believe it is likely an aerogel that belongs to the category of ultralight gels, in which the standard liquid components are substituted by gas. Jeffrey Lewis, a missile and nuclear weaponry expert from the Middlebury Institute of International Studies, said in 2008 that fog bank might be a result of nicknames associated with aerogels, such as frozen smoke or San Francisco fog. Nuclear alert. In October 1969, President Nixon secretly put U.S. nuclear forces on high alert for reasons that remain unknown to this day. High alert status keeps nuclear weapons prepared and ready to fire within 15 minutes of a launch command ordered by the Commander-in-Chief. The Nixon administration's decision was so secret that not even the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was briefed. Documents since declassified point to a potential connection to the Vietnam War, serving as a signal that the U.S. might use a nuclear weapon, ultimately pressuring Moscow and the North Vietnamese to negotiate the end of the war more peacefully. Nixon's administration was marked by political unrest, with constant discontent of the young adult demography, from which most men were conscripted to fight in Indochina. Nixon increased the number of troops deployed in Vietnam, provoking national protests that prayed for peace and a safe return for the soldiers. This also supports the madman theory that Nixon approached foreign policy in a way that made him appear insane, leaving enemies unable to predict his actions and serving as a deterrent to hostile acts against the U.S. Today, the only person alive with knowledge of why the nuclear forces were put on high alert is Henry Kissinger, who refuses to discuss it. Kissinger was a devoted advocate of a continuous and overwhelming display of force to make America's enemies think twice before attacking U.S. interests. He was responsible for the massive napalm bombardments of Vietnam and the suggestion of sending an American fleet to the DMZ in Korea during the Poplar Tree incident in 1979. Regarded as a controversial U.S. political figure, considered both a war criminal and an effective Secretary of State, there's no doubt that Kissinger had something to do with Nixon's decision to put the U.S. nuclear arsenal on high alert almost one year after the furious 1968 North Vietnamese Tet Offensive. Missing Nuclear Material The International Atomic Energy Agency, known as IAEA, maintains an incident and trafficking database system designed to track, quote, incidents involving illicit trafficking and other related unauthorized activities involving radioactive materials. From 1993 to 2015, the agency has frighteningly confirmed 762 incidents of theft or nuclear material loss, including, quote, quantity of potentially weapons usable nuclear material, like highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Many incidents in the database remain unresolved and, quote, do not have a follow-up report confirming their recovery. The nuclear material poses potentially devastating consequences as it could be used to create dirty radiation bombs. Concerns of suspicious unreported nuclear activity remain elevated worldwide, particularly after a mysterious cloud of iodine-131 was detected by nuclear sniffer planes in Europe in early 2017. Vela Incident A 
On September 22, 1979, America's Vela Hotel satellite detected a double flash of light near the Prince Edward Islands off Antarctica's coast. The mysterious double flash detected is characteristic of an atmospheric test of a nuclear weapon of 2 to 3 kilotons. Boeing WC-135 planes sent by the U.S. Air Force to investigate did not detect airborne radioactive dust. However, low levels of nuclear fission material were reported in Australia, where wind pattern studies indicated the fallout would have traveled. Although no publicly available seismic or hydroacoustic data corroborate the claim, the U.S. National Security Council reported that it has high confidence that the event was a low-yield nuclear explosion. Government documents related to the event remain classified, and the nuclear explosion perpetrator remains a mystery. One of the most promising theories explains that the flashes resulted from a joint South African and Israeli nuclear test that the U.S. decided to bury to avoid any foreign policy implications, given the close relationship among the countries. Other sources say it could have been a USSR, French, or even Indian nuclear test. Although the U.S. declassified some reports in 2006, no one really knows what happened that day and provoked the peculiar double flash closely related to nuclear detonations. <laughs>